what is light? If you go to Harvard University, from where I got recognition, you can go to one of the physics classrooms and you will hear a voice coming out from all directions. Oh. In the beginning, God said the three dimensional divergence of an anti symmetric second rank equals zero, and there was light. Wow. So, Dr. Kabat, this is the story for light, and four people wrote this story. Who, who, are, um, who are the four people? Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, and Niels Bohr. Okay, very, uh, very good. So what, um, what did Isaac Newton do? Uh, uh, just like everything else in modern science, our understanding of light, light comes from uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Oh. He was the first one to understand the rainbow. He, oh. re he refracted white light using a prism and separated it into its component colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Wow. Um, and um, what is the difference between the marker you are holding and the sun? Marker reflects light on a mixed light. The light that had my eyes actually originated 93 million miles away. It traveled that 93 million miles before bouncing off the marker and it's bouncing into my eyes. Wow. Um, but what exactly is, uh, is emitted from the sun? Is it is it a particle like an atom, or is it a wave like a, a wave on the surface of a pond? Newton used light as a particle, so he could explain refraction. Refraction is when something bends, like something from air into water. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and what did Max Planck do? He discovered E equals HF. God, it literally took him five hours to write eight because he didn't want to violate Newton. I see. Okay. And, um, and what did Niels Bohr do? He was a Danish physicist who contributed to the Bohr model. That's how he won the Nobel Prize. Good for him. Um, and how about uh, Albert Einstein? What did Einstein do? He put a barrier in the behavior of light. Light can only go as fast as a three times time rate to the power of eight. Wow, okay. He also stated that light has a mass and, and therefore light must behave like a particle even though it is a wave. Hmm, wow, that's, uh, that's kind of, that's a very confusing thing. So, um, so let's start our conversation with hydrogen. How, how does that sound? Sounds good. What is the Rydberg formula for hydrogen? Uh, 1 over lambda is equal to, to the Rid Rydberg constant, parentheses, 1 over n initial squared, minus 1 over n final, uh, final squared. And being, uh, being the, the constant that represents what state it is on. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this model contributes to the Bohr model. I see. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's great. And um, can you tell me uh, why the colors separate when they, say, go through a prism? Uh, one the color bend more than the other. For example, take Newton. He refracted white light using a prism, right? Mm -hmm. White light went into the prism. It got separated into those six colors that we see in the rainbow because one, one color bent more than the other. In this situation, the violet bent more than, than the yellow and red. I see. Okay. Um, and um, how about... Um, energy levels. Uh, can you tell me about energy levels? Is, um, is the energy of an electron quantized? Uh, yes, because electrons can't uh, have to be in the loud states. They can't be in, in, in 1.86 or, or in 2.43. I see that, that, 
those um, those aren't allowed. Uh, what? The, those uh, those aren't allowed. It has to be in an allowed state. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you? Um, it can't be continuous. That energy is discrete. I see. Okay. Can um, can you draw the um, the energy levels of, of hydrogen? Maybe from uh, from one to five. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, don't confuse a model of an atom with a nucleus. Okay, I'll try not to. This is the state one. This is state two. This is state three. This is state four, and this is state five. Oh, nice atom. Um, could um, I don't? Could you tell me? Uh, oh, could you calculate the energy of, of some of these levels? So these. So let's see. Let's uh, draw a Bohr model. So this is E one. So this is N one. This is N two, and this is N three. So, you might be asking, how do we find the E1, E2, or E3? That's, that's exactly what I'm asking. First, okay, so E1 is negative 2.17 times 10 raised to the negative 18. This has something to do with energy levels. Slash the Bohr okay. models. Uh huh. One electron volt, though, is 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 19 joules. Uh huh. We want to convert E1 into electron volts. Okay, let's do that. So, E1, negative 2.17 times 10 raised to negative 18 joules. This is technically on the top. So, uh -huh. so, we want this to be multiplied by a fraction. 1 EV, since we want to convert this to e, electron volts, must be on the top. Over 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 19 joule is on the bottom. We can cancel out the joules, so the only unit remaining will be the electron volt. Oh, good, that's what we wanted. So negative 2.17 over 1.6 times 10 raised to the first since 19 minus 18 is 1, so basically 10 electron volts. So negative 2.17 over 1.6 is negative... 1.3625. And if you multiply that by 10, you will get 13, negative 13. Okay. So, now, since we found you E1, you, you, you might be thinking, now we can find D2 using this method. But we can't. Let's use this equation. For, for any number, so e of any number, any given number is equal to the value of e1 in electron volts over and that his certain given number squared. I see, okay. Um, oh, good. So can you use that to get e2? Yes. So if we plug in n is 2, then we would get this. 6 to 5 or 4. So negative 3 point, negative 3 point four zero six two five. I see. So that's how you get E2? Mm-hmm. Very good. How about, um, how about E3? So let's put the value of E2 here. Good idea. You might notice uh, that E1 and E2 both end with a 625. Oh, that's curious. 
I never noticed that before. Now let's find the three. Besides this time, it won't end with 65. It won't? Okay. Let's, uh, so well, let's see. So let's plug it in. Uh, E3 is negative 13.625 over 3 squared in 9. Hmm. Uh-huh. So that is equal to negative 1.513. A couple of eight, nine. Oh, you're right. It doesn't end in six, two, five. Although E4 does. E4, the spoiler warning, is negative eight point eight five six five point eight five one five. Mistake there, six, two, five. Oh, I see. Okay. That's curious. No more states end, end up with six, two, five, though. Hmm. It's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. I have, um, I have another question for you. Um, how much energy does an electron need uh, to jump from the ground state to E3? Okay. Uh, let's, let's calculate. So, uh, I would be E1 minus E1 minus E3. Uh -huh. You might be thinking, how are we going to subtract those? Because this thing is neg. Both of these are negative. They are, that's right. Minus, minus and minus make plus. Uh -huh. So, negative 13.625 minus minus plus. So, plus 1.513. A couple of eight nine. Uh huh. I don't have a calculator here, so. Okay. Um, well, that's that's pretty good. I could um, I could put that in my calculator to, to work that out. Um. So, uh, would you like to talk about the photoelectric effect? Uh. Okay. Uh. So, tell me, in the photoelectric effect, where do electrons get their energy from? Mm, photons. So imagine you have this piece of metal and you have electrons there. Mm -hmm. So those, uh, those electrons are bound to the nucleuses in the atom. Uh -huh. if, if a photon with the right type of light and the right type of frequency uh, 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 hits it, then photons basically come from light, so mm -hmm. you can try signing a flashlight in it. Uh -huh. So, if the if a photon with a right type of light and the right type of frequency hits the electron, it can knock the electron loose. Really? Okay, wow. Uh -huh. the, the, the free electron is called the photoelectron. I see. Okay. It it has a ma mass and mass and even velocity, so we can cal so we can calculate the kinetic energy of this photoelectron. Really? So, um, so just for example, if a photon uh, with a wavelength of five hundred and twenty-five nanometers hit a uh, metallic cesium atom. Um, could you um, could you figure out the velocity of the photoelectron? Kb is half mv squared. This one applies to physics. Uh -huh. And Ke is also the energy of a photon minus the the work function, which we're going to say not. There are there are about ninety one metals in the periodic table, uh -huh. each with their own work function. Oh, okay. Um, do you know what the work function is for metallic cesium? I think work function is maybe it's 3.43 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So, so, wait, first let's find the energy of the, f of the photon. That will be necessary for finding the kinetic energy. And we want to find the velocity, right? Yes. So, half of Ke also has... Uh, 
of equation with the photon. So, so a method, a method that we can use later is e photon minus e work function is equal to half mv squared. Oh, very good. So, for now, let's focus on the energy of the photon. E photon is hc over the wavelength. Uh huh. So that's equal to Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 raised to negative 34 times the speed of light. Uh -huh. If you if you find it in decimality, you would actually get this value. Uh huh. It's a good estimate. This divided by the wavelength. 525 nano stands for 10 raised to the negative 9. Uh -huh. So 525 times 10 raised to negative 9 meters. Okay, very good. I think the nano stands for negative 9 from the late light lock in. Oh, maybe so. Ah, good, so that, that will give you the energy of the photon? Yep. So 6.626 times 2.998. So that's the energy of the photon? Uh, not yet. We have, oh, don't forget about the bottom of the fraction. Uh-huh. So, 19.864748. Divide that by... Five two five, and you get point zero three seven eight. Hmm, this calculator is really good. Oh, well, it's, uh, you're doing a good job with it. Times ten raised to the negative twenty six plus nine is negative seventeen. So mm -hmm. three point seven eight three seven six times 10 raised to negative 19. That is the value of the energy of the photon. I see, okay, very good. Use, use E photon minus E, the work function, let's say E naught is equal to half mv squared. Ah. Uh -huh. So, we can plug in, we can plug in our values. So, and then we can make them 19 minus 3.43 times 10 raised to negative 19 equals half mv squared. You can, you can always have a common denominator, like in division. So, so let's, let's work this out, 3.43. Seven eight three seven six one five minus three point four three is point three five three seven six one five point three five three seven six one five times had we to negative nineteen that's the common denominator mm -hmm. as in the division equals half mv squared. So 3.537615 times 10 raised to the negative 20, right? Mm -hmm. Equals half mv squared. Very good. We mult we now we'll multiply both sides by 2. So 3.5 three seven six one five multiply that by two is seven point zero seven five two three so seven point zero seven five two three and pretty so yeah times ten raised to the negative twenty equals half is it equals m v squared. Very good. We could point five uh, two, I'm pretty sure it is the reciprocal is a point five, which is half. Uh huh. I think you're right about that. 
So. Now what you gonna do? We divide both sides by the mass of our electron. Very good. So we can isolate V. So, 7.07523 divided by 9.11 equal uh, times 10 to negative 20 plus 31 is 11 mm -hmm. equals to V squared. Good. So, 7.07523 Divided by 9.11 is equal to 0 0.77664434646. That's a long list of decimals. It is. I need to look at this, your calculator for, for some sure amount of time. Mm, so... 0 0.7766444346 times 10 raised to the 11. Mm -hmm. So 7.7664434346 times 10 raised to the 10. Uh -huh. Now we're supposed to take the square root of this. That will cancel out the square. Oh, good. So seven, wait, wait, wait. I see you sneaky square root button. Did you find it? Here. There it is. So the square root of 7.7666, seven six, six. sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at this. At least I didn't make a mistake. So 7.7664, seven, six, six, four, four, Three, four, six. Take the square root of that. Two point seven eight. Hmm. So good. Two point seven eight six eight three three nine four nine. Long list of decimals, eh? Yeah. So. Two. Point two point seven eight six six eight three three nine four nine uh -huh. times ten raised to the fifth. Oh, good. So that's so uh, two. So it's followed by five zeros, right? One, two, three, four, five. Two seven eight six eight three three. So it's two point seven times ten raised to the five. Yeah. Good. Wow, that's a that's a fast electron. Could you tell me the energy of the light that's emitted if an electron jumps from n equals three to n equals two? Oh well. Uh, first, every electron that lands from whatever certain state that is above from two all the way down to state two is called the Balmer. Is in the Balmer series. See, uh -huh. The Balmer series is is visible light. I don't know what pass pass in bracket or p fund are, but all I know is that Balmer series are visible light, and the Lemon series, which is landing at state one, is is ultraviolet. I see. Okay. So Lemon series. The shorthand for ultraviolet is UV. Uh huh. Okay. So this is in the Balmer series. Oh, good. Because that way you'll be able to see it. That's good. Riper's constant, Planck's constant times the speed of light, parentheses, 1 over n initial squared. Oh, no, no. 1 minus n initial squared, right? Minus 1 over n final squared. Uh -huh. So, so let's plug all of those things in. The Rydberg constant, 1.0974 times 10 raised to the 7th, times the Planck constant, 6.626 times 10 raised to the negative 34, times 
times the speed of light. Mm-hmm. The eight. So, what times one over an initial squared? So, three squared is nine minus one over and four squared. So, two squared is four. We need a negative answer here. That means it's going down. Uh-huh. If there's a positive answer here, I'm pretty sure it goes up, but Dad never told me. I think uh, you're right about that. If it's, if it's positive, it would be going up. Okay. There's a lot of black ink on my hand right now. Uh-huh. Is, uh, is that okay? So let's multiply all these things together. 1.0974 times 6.626 times 2.998. Boy, this calculator is good. 21.7995 Lots of lists of decimals. Mm -hmm. 21.7995-7446 times 10 to the negative 34 plus 15 and negative 19. 1 over 9 minus 1 over 4. So negative 0.111 repeating minus 0.25. Mm -hmm. Here, one divided by nine. See, there's one repeating. Uh huh. Our answer minus point two five is. It's going on and on forever. I see. Uh huh. All, all I know is that the at the end there is a nine. So negative zero point one three a cup oh wait 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 twenty one point seven nine nine five seven four four six times our answer so ne negative zero point one three repeating eight nine so our answer times Twenty one point seven nine nine five seven four four six. Negative three point zero two seven seven one eight six seven five. Hmm, we're getting closer. That's good. So negative three point zero two seven seven one eight six seven five. I'm sorry to negative 19. This mm -hmm. had negative means it's going down. So it's not really very special. So once we find the frequency, we'll be able to drop that value. Okay. Um, all right, very, uh, very good. So can, uh, can you tell me what the frequency is for that photon? Okay. So, uh... I think it should be leading up to black holes at this point. Oh, all right. We're going to get to black holes. Oh, very good. Okay. So negative. Okay, so frequency is. Oh, great! I forgot it. I, I, I wish wormholes were weird, real. Oh, great. Me, uh, me too. But let's see. So is is there a formula for um for the frequency? Uh, I forgot. Maybe is um. It's in it's in my living room, but I but I can't go through a wormhole. Ah, uh, okay. Well, is is the energy maybe equal to? Wait, I... wait. F is wait. Energy is HF, right? Very good. That's the formula. So, F is H over E, right? No, no, it's E over eight. There it's you go. swapped. So the energy of the photon. So.
So delta E divided by the Planck constant. Uh huh. What's a big Planck wrote like a raw noodle? <laughs> Is that right? Or something. So, so that's equal to negative three. Oh wait, we can drop the negative value now. Sorry. So. <laughs> Three point zero two seven seven one eight six seven five times ten raised to the negative nineteen divided by the whole plan constant six point six two six times ten raised to the negative nineteen. I mean no negative thirty four. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So. 3.02771867.5 divided by 6.626 0 0.456945166 Dad told me to estimate those to just two decimals. But, but remember, the two, two decimals is smaller than the real whole value. That's true. 45166 times 10 raised to the mm, 15. Very good. You can use addition to solve, to solve subtract, subtraction. That's what my, my teacher at first grade taught me. 45694516. Times 10 raised to the 14. So this is what I was expecting to get. Let's do that. We found the frequency, so let's find the wave. I, re I remember from my room, lambda is 8t over e. Mm -hmm. But we're not using that equation. Oh, is there a different one you're going to use? Uh, the Rydberg equation. Yeah. Let, let's just give credit to him. One over lambda is equal to r, r, one over an initial squared minus one over a final squared. Uh-huh. Trust me, we're going to get the same thing as if we lambda is h c over e. Oh, that's, that's good. I was kind of worried about that. Nine minus 1 over and final square, so 4. Mm -hmm. So, 1.0974 uh, times point one three a couple of 8. Oh God, I'm spamming the the eight button nine. So three one five two four one six 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 six. The beast number. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So three one five two four one six 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 six. You can see the beast number in there. There it is. So times 10 raised to the 7, so 1.524166666 times 10 raised to the 6. Mm -hmm. So that's 1 over lambda. Uh -huh. Now if we do cross multiplication, oh, answer times 10. If, Okay, okay. I, I, I think I'm at the right point. So, 1 is equal to lambda times 1.524166666 times 10 raised to the 6. Uh huh. Oh, 4 sixes, sorry. I didn't want to write the beast number in there. Okay, so now what do you do? Uh, yeah.
So you want to find the Forlanda. That's right. Wait. So. What's a good way to solve for Leander? Mmm. So. We could isolate Lambda by both sides by this, this huge value. Oh, good. Yeah, that would work. So Lambda. So Lambda is equal to 1 divided by. 1.52416666 times 10 raised to the 6. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of 6s. That's a lot of 6s. So 1 divided by 1.524146. Oh, I put three 6s. Oh, great. It's probably close enough. Yeah. I still I still got six five six. So that's equal to six fifty six nanometers, I think. Yeah, very good. Okay, so you've got the um the, and the wavelength. Six what? six fifty six nanometers. What, what color is that light? Do you want an example of the hydrogen emission spectrum? Please do. This is hydrogen gas. When, when hit it with, with pure high energy, it will split into two, two hydrogen atoms. All of those emit a pale pink light. And when you put that pale pink light through a prism, It splits into four colors, violet, blue, turquoise, and red. Red being the water with, six, with a wavelength of 656 nanometers. Oh, you know the wavelengths of the others too? Uh, yeah. This is turquoise, 46 nanometers. This is blue, uh, for 34 nanometers, and this is a violet with only for 11 nanometers. So they range kind of from the 400, 400 all the way to 7, 750. Oh. At least that's what the diagram says. Okay, very, very I, good. I, I think they range from 400 to 700. Uh-huh. Oh, very, uh, very good. And um, I guess one more question. Can, um, can you tell me uh, can you figure out the speed of light from all of this? Oh, C is lambda times the frequency. Six nanometers. So if we make it smaller and smaller, this acts. So six fifty-six nanometers, sixty-five point six would mean negative eight, and six point five six would be negative seven. That's right. So four point five times six point five six. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, so wait, wait, so wait. Four point five times six point five six is 29.52. Okay. Which dad always likes to round to 30. He always rounds, he also always rounds decimals to whole numbers. Is that right? Oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll let him do that. So, 29.52 times 10 raised to the 7. Because mm-hmm. 14 minus 7 is 7. Oh, good. So, let's make this in scientific notation. 2.952 times 10 raised to the 8. Hooray! We got the speed of flight. Congratulations. Um, 
Okay, um, how, about, um, how about the double slit experiment? Do you want to tell me about the double slit experiment? Okay. In the beginning, you said that light is a particle. Is, is it really a particle? Mm, Einstein also. Einstein with the IQ of 160, he also used the uh, light as a particle so he could explain the photoelectric effect and find the velocity of photoelectrons. Uh huh. But suppose you have um, two beams of light that are crossing each other's paths, then uh, they don't interact at all. And if they were made out of particles, there's, uh, if they were made out of, so these are the two beams of light. Right? Mm hmm They were made of, uh, Newton and Einstein took them as particles. Uh-huh. You would say if they were made out of particles, then they would have bounced off in round, random directions. That's, but, that's exactly what I'd think. Yeah, but that did not happen at all. Hmm, okay. So, um... They just randomly pass through each other. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, I guess another uh, another problem is that light makes interference patterns. Um, can you um, can you explain to me why light makes an interference pattern but particles don't? Okay. For so let's see. This is. A combination of particles ampersand waves. Uh huh. We could split it into three categories. Marbles, water waves, and electrons. Uh huh. Electrons being the sort of particle we're using because they represent light. As I said in chapter four. So, marbles, if they go through one slit, they will have one band. Mm -hmm. There will be one band appearing on a wall. Uh -huh. If they go through two slits, there will be two bands appearing on the wall. Mm -hmm. Now let's go with water waves. Okay. So, water waves classify, uh, so one, one slit, two slits. Mm -hmm. One slit will give you one band, just like a marble, but two slits will give you an interference pattern of many bands. Uh -huh. Now, let's test the electrons. Let's do that. How do electrons behave? Actually, I think this could be a better one. Better the way to show electrons. So one slit, two slits. Mm -hmm. One slit will give you one band, just as you expected. But two slits, but two slits will give you an interference pattern of many bands. Really? How, just how just could like a this water wave. Yeah, this is similar to the behavior of a water wave. Let's see, okay. The scientists thought they were shooting electrons too fast, so they tried to, to shoot electrons more slowly. Uh-huh. Electrons in slow, in slow modes. Uh-huh. This... Uh, but after 60 minutes or one hour of the same di thing, after 60 minutes of two slits and shooting it one at a time, mm -hmm. they still got an interference pattern of many bands. Really? That's very interesting. <sighs> but then scientists became a little clever and they put an observer next to uh, one of the slits to see what slit an uh, electron exactly went through. Uh-huh. So 
electrons with observer. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's watching which slit it goes through? Uh, probably a machine observer. After an uh, electron and observer uh, with two slits, with an observer, mm -hmm. it went back to behaving like a particle. Really? Only two bands. Huh, that's very surprising. So, so now I'm all confused. Uh, is, um, uh, is it like a particle or a wave? I don't know. We, might, we will discuss it at the end. Okay, let's, uh, let's come back to that. Um, would you like to um, talk about black holes? Yeah, we can do it on the space around this. Well, first of all, can you tell me what is a black hole? Oh, black holes are, are such a compressed and small region of space-time. They're, they're sorts of the, uh, uh, dead stars that are a minimum eight times as large as our own sun. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're gravitational pull of which is strong that nothing, not even light, can escape it. Wow. That's, why, uh, that's why they're probably black and we cannot see them. See, okay, can, um, can you prove that nothing can move faster than light? Tell me um, how much uh, how much mass uh, an electron has when it has a speed of four times ten to the seven meters per second. Okay, and so the velocity is mass of the electron is negative uh, nine point one one times ten raised to negative thirty one. Uh huh. That's pretty small. That's tiny. It's zero followed by thirty one zeros and then followed by a 911 uh -huh. with, without resembling the emergency call. <laughs> That's true. The rest, this is just the rest mass of, of the electron though. Is there a formula for uh, how much mass it has when it's moving? Yep. Yeah. EC speed, so Moving mass is the rest mass over the square root of 1 minus velocity squared over the speed of light in a vacuum squared. I see. Very good. Okay. So 9.11 times 7 to negative 31 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared 4 times 10 raised to the 7 squared divided by c squared, and we found out 2.952 times 10 raised to the 8 squared. 0.01% more mass than rest mass. Okay. In other words, 9.19 times 10 raised to the negative 31. It's sucky, right? Okay, so it's really, really small. Pretty tiny increase in the mass. Yeah. What if it's going 98% of the speed of light? Yeah, it will become pretty big. Its mass will become pretty big. Okay. I forgot the graph for it though. It'll be five times its own rest mass. Is that right? No. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's see, see if that's right. V is in, in point nine eight C. Mm-hmm. And moving mass is missing. Right, that's what Rest mass about. is also rest mass. Yeah, it's weird. So, moving mass is rest mass, so MO over the square root of 1 minus V squared, so 0.98 C squared, over c squared mm -hmm. so these cancel out five times the rest mass of an electron really five times as much mass yeah that's a big increase uh, can you can you calculate the escape velocity from the earth we want to find the escape velocity mm -hmm. for that we need the radius of the earth 
For that, we need the radius of the earth. Uh huh. Uh, the mass of the earth. This this is from the reference t table of physics. Mm -hmm. Five point nine eight times ten eight to twenty four. Mm -hmm. The government can't be wrong. And let's hope. Wait. And the gravitational constant. This is supposed to be big M. Six times t t wait. Six point six seven. Sorry. Six point six seven. Times ten raised to negative eleven. Ha! Huh, my perfume smells like sour apples. I need to go drink some just some juice. Wow. That's like my art teacher's computer. Uh huh. How do we find the scale velocity? Well, P E is K E. K is P too. Mm -hmm. So potential energy is G, a big M, small M over R squared. Kinetic energy is half of V squared. So M, the small M, small M cancels. So DM over R. If we multiply both sides, we will get 2DM over R. Very good. This 2 came on the top. That's why R, the R shouldn't be 2R. Don't make that mistake. I'll try not to. Equals V squared. So that's the equation we're using. 2DM over R is V squared. That would mean the square root of 2DM over R is V. Excellent. So V squared is 2 times 6.67 times and the mass of the earth times 10 raised to the 13, since 24 minus 11 is 13. Uh -huh. And we divide that by the radius of the earth. So 6.4 times 10 raised to the 6. Mm -hmm. this, th this thing works pretty well. Ooh, I'm glad to hear that. 2 times 6.67 times 5.98. That is 9.7732. That's what this calculator gave me. Okay. I guess I just know how to operate this calculator very well. Mm, clearly you do. Casio. So, over 6.4 times 10 to 6, that thing is relaxing, I guess. So, if we divide our answer by 6.4, I never knew this would come up whenever you press enter. So, 12.4645625. 12.4645625 times 10 raised to the 7. Mm -hmm. So 1.246456625 times 10 raised to the 8. So we divide this answer by 10. If we square root 1.2 Four six four five six two five one point one one six four four eight zero five one. Hmm. So we're good. One point one one six four four eight zero five one. Bro, that's that's such a small change. How is that the square root? Let's see, is, uh, is it's, there a... It's a point one three change. Um, I guess that's true. What about the, um, in, is that in scientific notation? Times 10 raised to the 8? I mean 4 because of the square root. 
There you go. So that is the speed velocity of the Earth. I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's uh, the velocity most rockets go to. Uh huh. I guess that's how fast you need to go if you want to escape from the Earth. So uh, it's about eleven thousand. So eleven thousand one sixty four point four four eight zero five meters per second. Mm -hmm. Can you turn the Earth into a black hole? Mm -hmm. If you if you if you squash it so small that it eventually turns into a black hole, I don't know. We'll have to invent a machine for that. Everything has something called a Schwarzschild radius. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure the Earth's Schwarzschild radius is as small as as a peanut. Oh. Uh, that's not how you draw a peanut. Please don't. Pretty close. That looked like a good peanut to me. You know, for the short shield radius. Uh, oh, yeah. The, radi the radius is 2gm over r, right? That's right. So r must be 2gm over v squared. Uh-huh. And to get the short shield radius, what do you put in for the velocity? Oh, uh, the escape velocity for, uh, for black holes are uh, the speed of light. So we're just going to plus, replace V with C. Oh, very good. Okay, that makes sense. So, so 2 times 6.67 6, times, times the... Uh, so we're going to swap Earth for an equally massive black hole. Uh-huh. So, times 5.98, not 6 exactly. 5.98 times 10 to the 24 minus 11 is 13. Mm -hmm. So the top is basically the same, mm -hmm. but the bottom isn't. So 3 times, uh, actually 2.952 2 times 10 raised to the uh, 8 uh -huh. squared. Oh, very good. So that's the Schwarzschild radius for for okay. the black hole. Okay. Yeah. So two times six point six. I don't know how the calculator is typing in random things in it by itself. Hmm. Last time I cleared the calculator, I I saw one five three. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Do Wait. K A T Z. Um, yeah, I guess that's uh, a lot of books. Uh, it says KATV on both of those physics books. Uh huh. I guess and that's my, who wrote them. And, and Miss Katz is the, is the name of my teacher. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, maybe she wrote the books. What? She's a, only a first grade teacher. Well, you never know. Mm. Okay. But she only taught second grade and first grade. Oh, okay. Well, well yeah, maybe it's uh, somebody else that has the same name. I don't know. Okay, so 2 times 6.67. 6, oh, God, it typed another thing by itself. Hmm, do you need to clear it again? I don't know. 2 times 6.67 6, times 5.98. It's like, like a race between... Me and the mushroom. Uh-huh. So 79.7732. Okay. Seventy nine point seven seven three two. So seventy nine point seven seven three two. Yeah. Oh god, I just repeated uh, that without knowing. Time we do the 13 over 2.952. Wait, is there any square button here? I think there is. Do you see it? It's right there. Oh, great. 8.71430. Oh, 8.71430. Three o four. Hmm. This calculator works pretty.
pretty well. That's good. Is, um, is there an exponent that goes with that? Is there a, yeah, a 16, 10 raised to the 16. So, 79.7732, divide that by 8.714304. You bet it's a decimal, but you never know. It could be a whole number. Could be. Okay, I guess it's a decimal. 9.1542824 A very small decimal though. 9.1542824 mm -hmm. times 10 raised to the negative 3. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that would be the Schwarzschild radius for the Earth? Yeah. That's pretty small, right? That is about the size of a peanut. Or uh, maybe it could be bigger than a peanut. Maybe it's the size of a beach ball. Hmm, I think it's maybe maybe the size of a big peanut. Okay. Um, so if the Earth turned into a black hole, would uh, would we be able to oh. survive? Mm, uh, let's check that out. First, let me... Why, uh, why isn't it a good idea? What would, uh, what would happen to us if the Earth turned into a black hole? Strong gravitation will press Earth, spaghettification. We'd spaghettify? Oh no! Okay, I guess a black hole do, do have a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They eat spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So let's make a, a table between Earth, it's a for, force of gravitation, and a, a equally massive black hole. Uh -huh. And it's gravitational rotation. I mean, it's gravitational force. Uh -huh. So I'll put a wooden, I'll draw a wooden test dummy over here. Uh huh. And the wooden test dummy, he's not that heavy. Let's say he does five kilograms. Mm hmm. His eyes and his. Okay, so that's. So, this is a little weirdo is five kilograms. So, the force of gravitation is dmm over r squared, right? Mm hmm. So. 6.67 times times 5.98 times 5 times 10 raised to the 13. Okay. So we divide that by the radius squared. So 6.4 times 10 raised to the 6 squared. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure all of this is 80.04. Let me check. 1 times 5.98 times 5. 199.433. So basically 200, but yeah. 199.433. When I entered 6 on my, on my, instead of 5.98, that ordered me to draw 6. And I got this different answer. Yeah, um, the force of gravity on this, uh, on that weird thing. Wait. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? I don't. We don't know if he's gonna survive or not. So I mean, what's a one ninety nine nine point four three three divided by forty point nine six four point eight six eight. Nine six uh, nine seven two seven. So I mean, it's close to five newtons. Oh, okay. So okay. wait, thirteen over sixteen? No, no, thirteen over twelve. There you go. So forty-eight point six eight 
nine six nine seven two seven. Very good. So the force of gravitation on that thing is just five. It's just ten times its mass. Just, uh -huh. just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. But that's nothing compared to the gravity. If the force of gravitation on a black hole. What's the force of gravity if it's near a black hole? Yeah, the radius is, uh, of a black hole is pretty small. Uh -huh. So that's why the top would be pretty big. And that, that means it's a whole a lot bigger. Ah, oh, okay. Can you, um, can you figure out what the force would be? Yeah, so this top, the, the top would be the same, so... Uh, 199.433 times 10 to the uh, 13 over 6.4 times 10 to the uh, 8 times 10 to the negative third squared. So 8 squared is 64. Actually, it was around 9, I think. So, mm -hmm. 9 times 10 raised to the negative 3, 9 squared is 81. So, 81 times 10 raised to the negative 6. Uh -huh. 199.433 divided by 81 is 2. Times ten to the nineteen. So two point four six two times ten raised to the nineteen. Wow. That's a whole lot more Newton. That's a huge force. Yeah. So the test dummy would get ripped in Saturn. Oh. Okay. Oh wait, Saturn is not the right word because this test dummy is only made out of wood, no glass. Well. He'd, he'd get smushed, that's for sure. Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, Must like you squish play doh with your hands. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, yeah, so we wouldn't survive on a black hole. We'd have the same effects. Yeah, it would smush us too. All right, so... Black holes don't exactly squish us. Just the gratification. Neutrons stars squish us. Man, I can't really say new, new train stars correctly. You did, a, you did a good job. So let me uh, come back to the question that we talked about at the beginning. What is light? I don't know, Doc. I don't know, Dr. Kabat. Some, uh, sometimes it, it acts as a wave, and sometimes uh -huh. it acts as a particle. Yeah. So, is it a wave or is it a particle? I don't know. It has a wave particle duality. Okay. And that's all I can say. Well, that's, uh, that's all that anyone can say. Wow, good, um, good job, Isaac. This was very impressive. Yeah. Excellent job. Congratulations.